Welcome everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are running through my top five worst purchases on iRacing. I've been on this platform for three and a half years now and spent quite a pretty penny on it as well. For anyone who doesn't know or wants to find out how much I've spent exactly, you can go check out that video. Um, that was a bit of an eye opener because I didn't realize I owned as much content as I do. And of course, not every single piece of content I've purchased has been a good purchase for varying reasons which we will discuss in this video but yes uh, there's a number of items here that i wish i could claim a refund or just go back in time and tell my past self not to purchase but of course hindsight is a beautiful thing and yes we're going to run through my top five there's some honorable mentions in here as well at the end but this in particular is my top five worst purchases on iRacing i'm interested to hear what your thoughts are uh, let me know in the comments below of course this is my opinion guys don't hate on me if there's a car or a track in here that you absolutely love this is what this video pretty much is it's just an opinion related video but of course if you disagree with me if you agree with me hit me up in the comments below i'm interested to hear your thoughts because we all have different experiences and different preferences in when it comes to racing so yeah let's get into it remember to hit that like and subscribe button turn those notifications on and enjoy <laughs> Coming in at number five is the GT4 class. Now I say class because I own three out of the five cars that are available in the GT4 series, the Porsche, the McLaren, and the BMW. And to be honest guys, I still don't know to this day why I own more than half of the cars that are available in this series because I have not done one competitive race in this series or with these cars. Uh, it's just, Something that I definitely got rose tinted glasses and saw all oh, brand new shiny content and just decided to purchase and make first look videos on. One of the negatives of having the YouTube channel is just trying to get a first look video out there for people to click on your channel and click on your video. And these cars are definitely ones that have fallen into that category. I personally as well don't like these cars. Uh, I just don't like the way the GT4s drive. They're very bulky, slower than the GT3. And I know a number of people love these cars as well as they do the touring cars as well. But for me, they're just a little bit too slow. I like something that's a little bit faster. I'm a bit of a speed freak. And yes, I wish that I could get a refund on these three cars because I have no intention in racing them anytime in the future and haven't raced them since i've purchased them so yeah pretty much the gt4 class in number five in at number four is the formula renault 3.5 now this car i just can't see eye to eye with it guys i purchased this some years ago when i was spending a lot of my time in f3 and thought this would be the natural progression the step up from formula 3 it's bigger brother it should suit me a nice step in between jumping up to formula 1 but it just hasn't been the case I, I can't get on with this car it doesn't have the same downfalls capabilities of a formula 3 car and it's caught me out so many times i can't tell you the amount of times i've driven this car and lost it through high speed corners and just been like what the hell why has it gone here um it has more top end speed which is great it has a limited amount of drs uses for out the race which i really like the concept of and hopefully one day uh, maybe even f1 incorporates to just stop the standard drs passes that add a little bit more strategy element to it which I love, but the actual car itself, I, I just don't see eye to eye with it, guys. Uh, I'm sorry to say I'm fully prepared for the comments below attacking me on this because I know it has a very strong community behind it. And some of you are even members of this channel, but I only ever really jumped back into this car to get back my A license <laughs> because the races are quite long, 40 minutes long. You get a number of laps in and a number of corners to get that nice safety rating bump up that is required to regain your A license. But yeah, that's it guys. Uh, really sorry to people who do like this car, but it's not for me and I do wish that I could get a refund. So Formula Renault 3.5 in at number four. 
in at number three is the Dallara IR01. Now, I know some of you guys are thinking, how is this not number one? Yes, there are indeed two worse purchases than this car. Now, this car, what can I say about it that hasn't already been said? I made mention of this in my top 10 video of single open seaters uh, and this came at the very bottom of the list little spoiler for you there guys because this was the brainchild of iRacing and the Lara it's not a real car it's a concept car for anyone who doesn't know and it's a combination of former Formula One cars and Indy cars all rolled into one the thing sounds absolutely mega with a v10 engine I mean, that's the best thing about this car, but the rest of it, oh, when it was on, upon release, guys, it was a car that you could spin in fifth, sixth gear. It was horrible to drive, more so driving on a knife edge than any Formula One car that I've had uh, the pleasure of driving in sim racing, and it was just a horrible thing to drive. Um, other than the first week it was released, I don't think I did any races in it whatsoever. That's how much of a turnoff it was. I went back to F3, and yes, I know that they have made changes since to it. Just filming this video here, um, it does feel a lot more planted now, but it just feels odd. The best way to say it, it feels artificial, and that's not surprising considering it's uh, a concept car. Uh, they can make tweaks here and there as much as they like to it because it's not real, uh, of course. You can argue sim racing isn't real, it's virtual but at least it's provided on real world data of real world cars. This isn't a real world car, this is a whole combination of them put together. And yeah, uh, every single official race that I saw, there was just massive crashes, hardly anyone finishing a race, and it died a very quick death. Of course, they had the world championships and you saw the best of the best, showcasing what this car can provide, but for the casual sim racer like us, it, it failed really, and it's one that made for some good content but i wish i didn't purchase it and i could get a refund so in at number three is the dallara ir01 in at number two is mount washington auto road hill climb our first track if you want to call it a track technically a hill climb uh, on this top five and yes i still don't know to this day why i even purchased this thing this falls into the category once again of, hmm, I can maybe make some content out of this. Take some cars up this hill climb, but shouldn't be like some Formula cars, some single seaters and put some videos out. But it was so tough and just so unenjoyable that I gave up and it was something that I never ended up doing. A complete waste of my money and I do wish that I could get a refund. Uh, even taking a rally cross car up here, like you're seeing on your screen, it just wasn't enjoyable and something that, uh, yeah, I will never have any intention of running ever again. So don't purchase this one, guys, unless you're really, really into your hill climbs. Um, it's just not worth it. Your money is better spent elsewhere. And coming in at number one on our worst purchase ever on iRacing is the Porsche Mission R, iRacing's first all-electric car. And this falls once again, guys, into the category of content. I purchased this car purely on the basis of making a video, a first look video, and it did do quite well. It got a few views and people were intrigued by it. I myself was intrigued by this car to see how an all electric car handled and performed. And the speed was mega as to be expected. In all electric cars, the acceleration is just phenomenal. But the rest of it really does miss the mark in my opinion. It's really jarring not having any gears whatsoever, just using your brake and throttle. Okay to be expected in an electric car, but it really does throw you off after driving with gears for so many years. And then the braking is very long and it's very labored. I mean, it's got the mobility of a boat um, is the best way to describe it. It just does not turn, just not a driving style that I like and wanted to put any more time into. And it's a car that I wish I could uh, get a refund on. It got me a few subscribers. 
it did its job, but to me, it's the worst purchase that I've made on this platform. You could argue that there's other worse purchases because I did get some benefit from the video, but in itself, it's a car that I knew almost instantly that I was not going to ever drive this thing ever again. And for that very reason, it's at the top of my list. And there we go, guys. That is our top five worst purchases on iRacing today. I know some of you are going to disagree with me. I'm looking forward to seeing your comments down below and hearing what your top five worst purchases are as well because everyone's experiences on iRacing is different and of course we all have different preferences when it comes to racing now just before we do end this video i do have some honorable mentions some cars and tracks that didn't make it into my top five so here they are and the first of these is the Corvette CR8 GTE. Now this is a car that actually I think is a good car, contrary to the others that have been on my top five uh, worst purchases. This is on here mainly due to timing. At the time this was released, I was heavily into racing the LMP2 car and I bought this because once again, it was something new, something shiny, and I wanted to get my hands on it just to see what it was like. I did a couple of official races, but the racing in itself just wasn't enough to entice me away from putting my time into the LMP2 car. So yeah, uh, a car that just wasn't able to entice me away from the LMP2 series and car. And yeah, for that reason, it's one that I haven't raced anywhere near as much as maybe I should have done, but it gets an honorable mention because it's something that I wish I could get a refund on and which I didn't really purchase. The next one is the Supercars Holden Commodore car. This thing is a beast. There's no other way to describe it, and every time I jump in this car, it makes me feel so small uh, because it has a very particular way of driving, something that I think is above my skill set, or, well, I just don't have the time to try and tame this beast, <laughs> shall we say. Um, and the reason why this has got an honorable mention is because once again, I did maybe one race in this car, um, bought it because it was something new at the time. The cars were brand new to the platform. And because this car and series in particular has a very strong Australian community behind it, because it is an Australian racing series, the peak races are at times when I just can't make or couldn't make uh, when they was definitely at their peak. And uh, yeah, for that reason, I just never ended up racing it. And because it had a very high um, bar in regards to skill level, I just didn't put the time and effort into it and put my time elsewhere. So yeah, a car that's uh, glad to have the opportunity to drive, but this is a car that yeah I, I wish didn't purchase because of those time constraints and just not being able to race it and lastly we have a track and one that i think is going to be very controversial because i know people absolutely adore this track me personally not so much and it's a strange one because I have very fond memories of this particular track because I have probably my biggest achievement on sim racing, winning a 24 hour race here. And I still don't love this track for that very reason. The memory is what I love, but not the track. And that is Daytona, in particular, the road course. This track for me, it's just boring. It's just boring guys. Of course, the majority of it is on the oval section. There's not enough happening in the road section to entice me um, into loving this track. And I've raced a number of races around here. This is one of the, the pieces of content that I've actually spent a considerable amount of time on. And every single time, I just find it boring. Uh, that's pretty much it, guys. I know I've seen clips of people going to the finish line, being pipped by just a nose um, uh, because of like how powerful the toe is around here. But for me, it's I don't get anything from it. Uh, and I will be racing in the next Daytona 24 hours as well. It's, it's the event in itself, not the track that 
entices me and but i enjoy it not yeah not the track uh, so yeah i know it's a controversial one some people absolutely love it it always gets really high participation whenever it's on the imsa schedule or the gt3 whatever it may be uh, but for me it's just one that i don't particularly like and i'd much rather spend my time elsewhere so yeah there we go guys that is the last of my mentions in regards to worst purchases uh, i hope you guys have enjoyed this video as i said earlier on please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below do you agree do you disagree what are your top five worst purchases i'm intrigued to find out so yeah remember to hit that like and subscribe button turn those notifications on and i'll see you for the next one bye